it remains the worst massacre in Europe since World War II. 8,000 people, mostly men and boys, were slaughtered at Srebrenica over the course of a few days in the summer of 1995 in the heat of the Bosnian War. They were targeted for being Bosniaks, a Slavic group that is mostly Muslim. Srebrenica was part of a larger strategy orchestrated by Bosnian Serb political leader Radovan Karadzic to ethnically cleanse large parts of Bosnia of Muslims and Croats with the aim of carving out a pure Serbian state during the violent breakup of the former Yugoslavia. In his words, skinning the cat before the whole world. Karadzic was sentenced to 40 years in prison in March at The Hague. Now, the man prosecutors say was his partner in war crimes, Bosnian Serb commander Ratko Mladic, is facing life imprisonment for two counts of genocide and nine counts of crimes against humanity. A man nicknamed the Butcher of Bosnia. When the Bosnian war ended in 1995, Ratko Mladic spent 16 years on the run. Mladic's trial is the last major case at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which has convicted and sentenced 83 people on all sides of the conflict. Mladic has always maintained he did nothing wrong and that his military campaigns were designed only to protect the Serb people, but prosecutors say different. Mladic used his control of his subordinates to achieve the cleansing he had told the 16th assembly would be difficult through a pattern of terrible crimes. In municipality after municipality, the cleansing campaign tore apart non-Serb families and communities, the burned out and empty shells of Muslim and Croat villages, and mass graves full of victims, while many of those who had not been killed or fled huddled in terror in camps, waiting to see which detainees would be the next to be brutalized. Mladic has filed an appeal, but a judgment is likely to be delivered next year. The final reckoning of Europe's last major conflict. Randolph Nogel, The Newsmakers. Dr. Nevin Andjelic joins me now from London. He's a senior lecturer in international relations and human rights at Regents University and author of Bosnia-Herzegovina, The End of a Legacy. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Andjelic. Is Ratko Mladic an evil man? I'm sure he is. Uh, the, 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 this has been proven uh, throughout uh, the later stages of his military career. Uh, his role uh, in, in the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, with a, a huge number of victims, uh, with the, the whole population being affected by his actions or by the actions of uh, the army, the situation that he created and provided with the opportunity, uh, criminal-minded uh, uh, thugs to commit such horrible crimes, uh, he, he must be evil man. Man. Maybe uh, the, the, in the conversation with the Serbian uh, prosecutor, uh, he, he told me that uh, Mladic requested uh, strawberries and uh, uh, books uh, by Dostoevsky. Uh, so wow. maybe he was uh, started. Uh, he started thinking about crime and punishment at the time, or maybe he just wanted to read uh, *Idiot* or a *Gambler*. I, I have no idea. But uh, uh, I think that uh, this issue of crime and punishment uh, is going to remain with his life, but also with the, the lives of all affected by the Bosnian yeah, war. Yeah, that's intriguing, because I, I asked that question, and I used that word evil, precisely because I had Dostoevsky in, in, in mind. Let me then ask you, he's an old man, he's a frail man, he probably doesn't have too many years left, he faces life imprisonment uh, for the remainder of what he has left for those charges, those two counts of genocide, nine counts of crimes against humanity and war crimes. Does it sound like a fitting punishment that he's going to spend the remainder of his years at The Hague? I think uh, the, this is uh, the only available uh, punishment, really. And uh, if we are witnessing the last uh, uh, 
uh, accused uh, of war crimes during the Second World War being uh, rounded uh, in, in, before the courts uh, uh, right now, uh, then uh, it, it means that, uh, yes, it is necessary, regardless how old uh, they are, how sick they might be by, by the time of their arrest, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the victims need this. Uh, as you mentioned, they need, it, need this for, for a kind of closure, although I don't think it is ever going to be achieved, uh, the, the full closure. They are going to live for the rest of their lives uh, with this on, on their mind. Yes, that, I mean, so there was Milosevic who died while on trial, there's Karadic who was sentenced, and now Ratko Mladic will probably, you know, be sentenced to life imprisonment. In many ways, those were the three biggest, right? So how, how much can we say that will be closure for Bosnia-Herzegovina to now focus on building their country and not looking back at the Balkans' war? Do you believe it will be closure? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. And uh, the problem is that for uh, over 20 years now, the post-war Bosnia-Herzegovina has uh, managed what uh, the, the governing nationalists on all three sides have, have managed was to divide society. Uh, once upon a time, it was uh, one society. Now, one could talk about three divided societies, and uh, it's only a kind of weak state system that is keeping them together. Therefore, they have separate education, and through the education, they are educating new generations who don't remember the war, who are now reaching, who are at university uh, education right now, who uh, possibly never met somebody from the other ethnic group, uh, who live their separate lives and uh, have been educated through the system that is not good, the old uh, good elements of the education system in Bosnia and Herzegovina have been destroyed. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, it is perpetuating, really, uh, the situation over there, whilst the rest of the world is uh, progressing uh, going forward. And uh, the, this is uh, the, really the political decision that has to be made to change this. And uh, uh, I don't see the force uh, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina right now for this. Uh, I think international community, as they have been involved in bringing mm -hmm. justice uh, with uh, setting up International Criminal Tribunal for former Yugoslavia in The Hague, they should uh, go for political action now and, and uh, provide a different electoral system uh, that would enable uh, not nationalists to come in power. Fascinating. Hopefully this closes a chapter for many of the families of the victims and others. Dr. Neven Angelic, unfortunately we are out of time. Good to talk to you. Hope to talk to you again in the not-too-distant future.